Good morning, everyone. It's so good to be speaking with you. The title of this talk is In the Flow. The innermost truth of the unity teaching is that God is good. And this good fills everything in life and every being and is the core truth of you and me. God, the good, is all there is. My first New Thought minister gave that mantra, and I'll never forget it. God, the good, is all there is. Even the embarrassments, the trials, the regretted things, the so-called fails are part of this infinite field of good from the God point of view. All of it, every difficulty, wearying, even hate-filled stuff becomes fodder, fuel for personal growth into the higher self, the greater interpersonal good. We learn so much from what doesn't work, don't we? Everything we deem bad is as much fuel for the fire of personal refinement as things we deem good. When we let go of our small self-interpretations of things, then, then we see clearly. We need to let go and let God, God that is love and peace and freedom, and good and decency, expressing as the high self within us all. This letting go is really then a kind of highest allegiance to the indelible good at the core of our being that is always wanting to express. Little by little, we're letting go of the judging ego. Then, then and only then, the imprisoned splendor as the poet Robert Browning called it, within every person, everywhere, can shine freely out into the world. Yes, that's when heaven can be here, right here on earth. Expressing this innermost you is the highest happiness. I love, therefore I am, is the radiant, elevated, spiritual equivalent to Descartes' everyday maxim, I think, therefore I am. God consciousness transcends thinking, certainly judgmental thinking, and rests in the peace and joy that is the one mind of good, the oversoul that we all share in, the oversoul, as Emerson called it. God saw creation and called it good and very good. Of course, in this world, we need both minds, right? The dualistic mind that can compare and contrast and balance the checkbook and do the job and take care of the kids. And the one mind that gives us rest and freedom and joy. The secret is, is the more we express our love from the God mind, the more good we see in our world. I mean, love, it begets love. Well, Constant comparison and judgment only beget anxiety and depression. Not so good. We need to accept no substitutes, not heavy television, not overeating, not excess sex, not uber shopping, not complaining. Mm -mm, none of these nor any other deadening habits can bring us the joy of simple, loving connection, of helping others in even the smallest ways. It might be just listening to them or acknowledging them in some way or laughing with them or smiling, pure and simple. Mm. As we live for the good of others, our own happiness deepens. It's win-win. Christ said, I am the light of the world. And he also said, you are the light of the world. The God mind is your true mind. And when it naturally rules you, your light shines outward, brightening all that it contacts and connects with. When you're deeply loving, you also bring others an experience of the simple joy of being. I had a wonderfully vivid lesson in this simple joy of being. There was a day long ago when I was riding shotgun in my beloved brother's new convertible sports car. He was taking me out for a spin. 
on a tight, sandy corner in the country, going way too fast. He lost control. Yep, in a blur, we left the road and wound up surfing along the top of a stone wall. A telephone pole sped by me just inches away. When we ground to a halt, wheels splayed. I hopped over the door onto the wall to the ground and then ran, da ran down the road, calling out, I'm alive, I'm alive. Such joy, I mean, the, the huge joy of simply being alive. Alive in the beautiful mystery of it all. This joy gets hidden behind the constant chatter of our ego minds, doesn't it? And we, we can further distance that joy when we're self-seeking, self-ish. Because we get uncomfortable, we might tend to want our own way in a certain way, and that distances us from others. We become separate from them, and, and that separation becomes a kind of hell. So to get the flow of joy of heaven going again in our lives, we want to be joyful givers of life to others. We want to be encouragers, harmonizers, and we need to take excellent care of ourselves to do it. That's not selfish. That fuels us up to be our best self with others. Hmm. Yeah, and in case you want a good role model, all you have to do is look to our bright, lovingly illumined minister, Mary Beth. She's someone who walks the talk, and that's just as clear as day. Thank you, Mary Beth. Life is for loving, as Eric Butterworth emphasizes. It's for giving the best within us. The best. It's for doing the right thing. The great Roman emperor, Marcus Aurelius, encouraged himself in his diary that was meant to be private, but that we now read globally as meditations. He wrote, just that you do the right thing, and the rest doesn't matter. Doing the right thing brings the sun out from behind the clouds. It replaces all our monkey mind thinking with what's been called energized tranquility. When we get our small selves out of the way, heaven lights our inner world and helps harmonize with the best that's within others. During the Nazi invasion of France, a teenager named Jacques Lucerin, blinded for life in a freak accident at age eight, successfully organized, he's a teen, successfully organized a few hundred other youths as activist resistors. He was a blind teenager. Ultimately, Lucerin was betrayed and arrested, then sent to Buchenwald concentration camp. Years later, with the American liberation of the camp at war's end, he and only about 30 others had survived out of the several thousands that had been in the camp with Lucerin. His love saved him. Here's what the brilliant and resourceful man wrote in his book, And There Was Light. Though I couldn't see the light of the world outside, the light was still within me. And as long as I paid attention to the light within, I rarely had problems getting around I also discovered that there was only one way to see this inner light, and that was through love. Lucy Rain loved well and was well loved. Love was his guiding light. Only when his love went away was he truly blind. That's what he wrote. Look from the fulfillment Look from the fulfillment, not for it. Look from the fulfillment, not for it. Be filled by the energy of good and God and love and act from that place. That is when we're guided. We look from the fulfillment of the great good within, the whole spirit within us, and that naturally shows the way. That's when we're in the flow of life. The last lines from the beautiful St. Francis prayer say it so clearly. 
For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying to selfishness that we're born to eternal life. And that eternal life is the timeless moment well lived. So how can we start today, this moment? How can we start? I'd like to present three basic steps to take. Well, they're not really steps. They're awarenesses. We're all brightly bored by the idea of steps to take or keys to turn. Just listen to these three perspectives. And if they appeal, you'll start to naturally flow with them. It'll just be natural. The first is simply to appraise and accept just how you are right now, this moment. Just go inside. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Home being within. How are things at home? Are you feeling rested or tired? Do you need more sleep? Do you need to eat better or eat less or both? Do you need exercise, meditation, companionship? Hmm. Make a mental note of how you're feeling. That becomes a blueprint. Much suffering comes from not taking loving care of ourselves by knowing what we need. Do you agree? Well, if so, that's great because this understanding is more deeply your own now. You just made it so. Let God, let good be the doer. Let it guide your actions. Let your own wisdom guide your actions. So let's move on to the second fundamental understanding. Okay, this is a big one. It's important, very important. You know on the other side of it how important it is. Have you forgiven the others in your life? Have you forgiven yourself? Here's a very important thing to know. If you forgive others, it will be easier to forgive yourself. Why? Because you will start to feel good about yourself by forgiving others. You'll feel freer happier, stronger, and in a much better place to forgive yourself. So let's look just a little deeper at this for a moment. The Buddha was certainly right. I mean, life contains inevitable suffering for us all. He built his entire teaching on that truth. Yes, people get hurt. And they tend to toss the hot potato of their suffering to others. You've done it with others in your life. So have we all, and the hot potato's been tossed to you many, many times. That hot potato, it burns. Along the way, people hurt people. So how do we all move beyond this game of potato tossing? We just have to put that hot potato down. We stop tossing it to others because they'll likely just toss it right back to us and more, hotter. We can put it down. And the way to do it is this, and this is the only way to really do it. You need to forgive. You need to forgive the past. It's over. A wonderful Stoic idea is that if you have no control over something, just don't worry about it. Well, we can make that somehow conform to this way of thinking of forgiving. As we do forgive, we let go of it. We let go of it and we're free. We have to forgive it first. God is love and he's not keeping score. He, she is not keeping scores, not judging. Forgiveness is for evolving instead of constantly recycling the same old hot potato game. To evolve as far as possible, forgive as fast as possible and as far. Because forgiveness is the only true healing of suffering. We forgive to let go and get happy again. We forgive so that we can give as before. We forgive so that the world can be at peace again. And peace is a strong place. It takes a strong person to forgive. You're that strong person. I know it. It's a win-win. The third and last perspective. Do you remember the story, The Little Engine That Could? It was great, wasn't it? Do you remember that the little engine that could kept repeating something? What was it he said? 
Say it to yourself right now if you remember. I think I can. 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 You can. Yes, you can. And it's just that you've put things into the wrong hands, your little self's hands, not God's hands, which are also your hands. And the little self always messes things up eventually, but God's hands, they're masterful. There's a master inside you. You know what you need to do. If you need to meditate or so you got friends or be with the kids more or work more or work less, be with your family more or less, whatever it is, you know, you already know. Be still and know that I am God. All you need to do is be still because you do know and it will emerge very easily and naturally. Be still and know that I am God. I am the truth. I am what your heart needs to know. I am here to guide you. That's what the God presence in you says. Because that big self can do it. <laughs> and it wants to try. It needs to try. It has to try. We can translate the Hindu idea that God is the doer. I've mentioned it before. As good is the doer. Love is the doer. Your big self is the doer. That big self can get her done. The little engine was coming from its big self. That's how it climbed the mountain. That was the miracle and magic of that story. For every kid that heard it, heard it, it was for me. And that is the truth of you when you open your heart, when you let go of the small self and become the deeper, bigger self. You know, they say higher self. It's also your deeper self. So this is the third way of seeing, and that's that your true self, your loving self, wants to meet challenges. It wants to triumph. That's its highest joy. It welcomes challenges to build strength. It doesn't run from them. It welcomes them. Optimize coach Brian Johnson put this idea into a little mantra that's kind of memorable. Ohms. That's right. Ohms. O-M-M-S. Obstacles make me stronger. Obstacles make me stronger. Obstacles make me stronger. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> so you can remember ohms. Obstacles make me stronger. Emerson wrote, good old Emerson, love that guy. Trust yourself. Every heart vibrates to that iron string. Get into the flow of trusting your own heart's wisdom, your own love's wisdom. That is your truest nature, only expressing, only being connected to and expressing your true nature can lead you to true and lasting happiness. Accept no substitutes. Are you in harmony with this trusting that, that you can do it, that you can let it happen, that you can let go and let the good happen, that you can say yes to life? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you are. A final word from the realm of long life experience. Glitches will happen. Yeah, that's right. Old conditioned bad habits will kick in as we strive to climb higher on the spiritual path. That's certain. There are no perfect persons. There is no perfect destination. In fact, there's no there there. The journey is the destination. There's no distant shore we'll attain someday. There's instead of a distant shore, there's a guiding star. There's a light inside. It's already within us, this light. We're just letting it out more and more. The guiding star is within your own heart. It's your wisdom. It's your love. When you're in the flow of that wisdom and love, well, Expect twists and turns. That's the uh, feedback from life. You will be caught momentarily in backwaters, but just get free, get back in the flow again as quickly as you can. Flowing water, it stays healthy. Stagnant water gets more and more noxious. So be your own best friend. When it comes to glitches, they'll happen. Reassure yourself that you can make this thing work. You can get through. You can succeed. You can triumph. You can master something in your life that needs mastering. Just flow on. 
Be your own best friend. Encourage yourself and flow on. Obstacles make you stronger. You learn and you grow. Everything helps you respond more and more quickly to the light in your heart that guides you perfectly as it guided Jacques Lusserin. God is for you. So in conclusion, here's, here's an image that sums it all up. In your mind's eye, see two horizontal parallel lines with a gap in the middle, a big gap. Where you are right now, well, that's the lower line. It's just in space, but it's where you are right now. That's true. The upper line is the best version of you, the person that you can be, that you want to be, the person that God, good, love, happiness wants you to be, the person your own heart wants to be. The Stoics call this ideal your eudaimon, or good soul. You could say it's your Christ self. The Hindus call it your Atman. It's your best you. Now, in that gap between the two lines, between who you are currently and your best self, in that gap is where lives depression, regret, anxiety, all the self-inflicted suffering lives there. Our job is to close that gap, is to close down that gap. When we don't strive to close that gap, day after day we suffer more and more because our thwarted potential, our blocked light, our imprisoned splendor festers like stagnant water and becomes diseased more and more. The flow stops, we suffer more and more. We suffer more and more. We want to close the gap. We want to start closing that gap. And we can use the Lord's Prayer as our map. It was given on the mount from the high place where the Christ lives in each one of us, in you. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven. Heaven is our source at the heart of us within. It's pure joy itself. Hallowed be thy name. Your very nature is holy and whole. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, let's strive to bring out our inherent goodness and love and decency into the world, sharing it with family and friends and all of life around us. Give us this day our daily bread. Let's let God, which is love, nurture and fill us every day, every single day. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And let's give that forgiving love to ourselves and all others so we can start again, start new. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Don't let's say stay stuck in repetitive fool's gold behaviors that get us nowhere and even make us miserable. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Our core goodness is the true kingdom, queendom, the heaven that is right here inside us all the time, always. Amen.